Welcome to PQA, Petra's Questions and Answers. I'm Alex Venz, and obviously, I'm back. I know it's been about two weeks uh, since I've posted up an episode of PQA, but I had some family emergency stuff to take care of. Anyway, it uh, should be regular schedule from here on out. So let's get started. Our first question, actually our only question this week, uh, is... What is the best way to isolate vibration from pumps and fans in water-cooled cases? Not a bad question. Obviously, there are lots of ways that one can reduce the noise output of their water-cooled PC, so we're only going to touch upon a few of them today. Let's start with pump vibration. Here I have some of the more commonly used materials for uh, isolating pump vibration. Um, let's see. Uh, usually when one goes and buys a pump, like the Lang D5 pump, also sold as the SwiftTech MCP655, uh, you'll get a, uh, a hard neoprene pad, uh, a lot like this, except for it'll have uh, adhesive on both sides. Um, this, that's probably what most people end up using. It's not that great, but it will help some. Uh, some other materials that are vastly more effective, uh, but not seen uh, being used as often, would be things like uh, either egg crate foam, or in this instance, um, a block of this uh, Tempur-Pedic Foam. Uh, it's actually the same foam that's used in those uh, Tempur-Pedic mattresses. You can, uh, or at least you used to be able to, go up on their website and request a free sample of this stuff. They'll send you a little block like this. Works really well. It's really, really squishy. Uh, downside is, if you do go for the Tempur-Pedic block, uh, you will have to put up with junk mail from them uh, until the day you die. It's really that bad. Uh, another material which uh, popped up, well, a few years ago, uh, is this, uh, it's a small sample of it here, this is a uh, latex-free thermoplastic elastomer gel. Um, it is extremely stretchy and squishy and it's kind of fun stuff to play with. Um, but it's, it's basically the best vibration absorber that I've found. Um, this is available from various uh, online stores sold in 3 by 3 or 4 inch by 4 inch sheets. Um, it can also be found in 12 by 12 and 24 by 24 sheets at a particular parts supplier slash materials supplier that is mentioned frequently uh, in tech forums that I won't mention for various reasons. As for the actual use of these various materials, um, generally in my own builds I don't really secure the pump at all to the case. I don't move my cases around much, I'm not really worried about it. Um, so, in my own builds, I take a pump, for example, and just set it on top of a sheet of the, um, uh, the thermoplastic elastomer gel. And it has a bit of tack to it, so, I mean, things don't really move around much once it's on the, uh, the gel material. Um, but you can poke holes through it and run bolts through the case just to mount things. Uh, but when you do that, you are adding a, a physical... Uh, connection between the pump and your case, and that'll transfer some vibration unless you isolate um, the nuts and bolts and that sort of stuff that you're using to anchor the pump. Um, foam blocks like this, again, I usually just will set the pump on it, um, which you can still run mounting hardware through there if, it, if you have a case that you move around a lot. The egg crate foam, what I've seen a lot of people do with that is they've actually um, completely wrapped their pump in it and then just kind of thrown that in their case. Um, that works pretty well, but yeah, most, most of the, the actual pump mounting schemes that uh, I use don't involve hard mounting the pump to the case, just because that transfers additional vibration. Uh, again, though, if you are going to be moving your case around, running some bolts to the case probably a good idea. You can use some washers uh, on the underside of the case and a little bit of foam or, or rubber or neoprene um, just to help isolate. Um, that hard connection or to help isolate some of the vibration. Here's one rather messy example of the use of unsecured pumps and the, uh, the latex-free thermoplastic elastomer gel sheets uh, that I mentioned previously. You can see this is actually a series pump set up and there's a section of the gel material at any point where the pump would meet the, uh, the chassis itself. And they're held in place fairly securely by the material and just the tubing. So I don't really have to worry about those going anywhere. And here's a rather dusty example of uh, a hard-mounted pump uh, sandwiched, or with a, with a piece of that neoprene foam sandwiched between the pump and the case. Uh, you'll see that it's, it's a little loose here, 
but that's because uh, I actually have uh, on the underside of the case uh, more foam between the the nuts which secure these these uh, screws and uh, in the case itself to help reduce the vibration transferred uh, through the hard mount and it it doesn't work nearly as well as uh, <clears throat> as the the unsecured pumps on uh, on the thermoplastic elastomer gel that I was showing you previously. It also doesn't help that this pump produces a lot more vibration than those uh, uh, those DTEC DB1s. But I'll, uh, I'll tilt the case a bit here. And come under here. Okay, you, you really can't see that, but there's uh, some foam here and some, uh, some nylocks under here that mount everything. And as, as I said, it does help to reduce vibration. It's not nearly as good as, as using the, uh, the gel, um, but it is something, and in this particular case, I don't have to worry about the pump uh, moving around at all and, and scratching any of the paint or anything, because uh, this case was originally a um, sort of a display thing that I'd set up at, uh, at LAN parties when we'd uh, sponsor those. Fans, on the other hand, present problems that are similar to those of pumps. However, in the instance of fans, you don't really have an option when it comes to securing them. You pretty much have to hard mount them unless you want to use um, vibration absorbing mounting screws, which I don't actually have any here. Um, but for larger fans, heavier fans, they usually aren't a very viable option. You can get rubber gaskets for fans to place between the fan and whatever you're mounting it to, like with this radiator, uh, but they don't tend to help that much. Uh, the best advice I can give when it comes to reducing fan vibration really would be to choose well-balanced fans. Um, typically inexpensive fans like 8 Loon fans and many others aren't very well balanced and will produce a lot of additional vibration. Um, it's for this reason that most of my fans, or most of the fans that I use, are fans like the Scythe S-Flex fans, Comaflex fans, or the Scythe General Typhoons because they tend to be very well balanced, um, they don't produce very much vibration, so there's less really to combat um, as far as vibration there. Uh, Delta fans and, and other um, well-respected OEMs, uh, they, theirs tend to be very well balanced as well, but obviously with Deltas, vibration is the least of your worries. Uh, as far as other mes methods for reducing fan noise go, um, a rather important one that a lot of people overlook would actually be cutting out or removing uh, obstructions uh, either at the exhaust or intake side of a fan. Uh, most cases will have stamped steel grills uh, covering a fan and those will actually produce a lot of noise, just the, the, the turbulence that they create. And so removing those from your case, just a simple Dremel or a jigsaw or whatever you happen to have handy, um, can actually result in a pretty substantial noise reduction and, as a bonus, you get an increase in airflow because you're reducing the restriction um, that the fans have to fight against. In case anyone is unclear, here are uh, two quick examples of integrated fan grill removal on an Antec P180 case. As you can see, uh, I am actually using some of the, um, the rubber sound dampening material between the fan and the case just because I want to get as quiet as, quiet as possible, but the majority uh, of noise reduction actually came from the removal of the steel grill that was in here. Uh, also did the same thing on top of the P180 as well. Well that's about it for this week's episode of PQA. Remember, if you have any tech questions, don't forget to send them to questions at PetrusTech.com or Twitter.com slash PTPetra. See you guys next week!